How the Rhinoceros Got His Skin by Rudyard Kipling Once upon a time, on an uninhabited island on the shores of the Red Sea, there lived a Parsi from whose hat the rays of the sun were reflected in more than oriental splendour. And the Parsi lived by the Red Sea with nothing but his hat and his knife and a cooking stove of the kind that you must particularly never touch. And one day he took flour and water and currants and plums and sugar and things and made himself one cake which was two feet across and three feet thick. It was indeed a superior comestible. That's magic. And he put it on the stove because he was allowed to cook on that stove. And he baked it, and he baked it, till it was all done brown and smelt most sentimental. But just as he was going to eat it, there came down to the beach, from the altogether uninhabited interior, one rhinoceros with a horn on his nose, two piggy eyes, and few manners. In those days, the rhinoceros's skin fitted him quite tightly. There were no wrinkles in it anywhere. He looked exactly like a Noah's Ark rhinoceros, but of course much bigger. All the same, he had no manners then, and he has no manners now, and he never will have any manners. He said, how? And the Parsi left that cake and climbed to the top of a palm tree with nothing on but his hat, from which the rays of the sun were always reflected in more than oriental splendour. And the rhinoceros upset the oil stove with his nose, and the cake rolled on the sand, and he spiked that cake on the horn on his nose, and he ate it. And he went away, waving his tail, to the desolate and exclusively uninhabited interior, which abuts on the islands of Mazandaran, Socotra, and the promontories of the larger equinox. Then the Parsi came down from his palm tree and put the stove on its legs and recited the following sloka, which, as you have not heard, I will now proceed to relate. Them that takes cakes, which the Parsi man bakes, makes dreadful mistakes. And there was a great deal more in that than you think. Because, five weeks later, there was a heat wave in the Red Sea, and everybody took off all the clothes they had. The Parsi took off his hat, but the rhinoceros took off his skin and carried it over his shoulder as he came down to the beach to bathe. In those days, it buttoned underneath with three buttons and looked like a waterproof. He said nothing whatever about the Parsi's cake because he had eaten it all, and he never had any manners, then, since, or henceforward. He waddled straight into the water and blew bubbles through his nose, leaving his skin on the beach. This is the picture of the Parsi beginning to eat his cake on the uninhabited island in the Red Sea on a very hot day, and of the rhinoceros coming down from the altogether uninhabited interior, which, as you can truthfully see, is all rocky. The rhinoceros's skin is quite smooth, and the three buttons that button it up are underneath, so you can't see them. The squiggly things on the Parsi's hat are the rays of the sun reflected in more than oriental splendour, because if I had drawn real rays, they would have filled up all the picture. The cake has currants in it, and the wheel thing lying on the sand in front belonged to one of Pharaoh's chariots when he tried to cross the Red Sea. The Parsi found it and kept it to play with. The Parsi's name was Pestonji Bamonji, and the rhinoceros was called Strawks because he breathed through his mouth instead of his nose. I wouldn't ask anything about the cooking stove, if I were you. Presently, the Parsi came by and found the skin, and he smiled one smile that ran all round his face two times. Then he danced three times round the skin and rubbed his hands. Then he went to his camp and filled his hat with cake crumbs, for the Parsi never ate anything but cake, and never swept out his camp. He took that skin and he shook that skin, and he scrubbed that skin and he rubbed that skin just as full of old, dry, stale, tickly cake crumbs and some burned currants as ever it could possibly hold. 
Then he climbed to the top of his palm tree and waited for the rhinoceros to come out of the water and put it on. This is the Parsi, Pestonji Bamonji, sitting in his palm tree and watching the rhinoceros stalks bathing near the beach of the altogether uninhabited island after strokes had taken off his skin. The Parsi had put the cake crumbs into the skin and he is smiling to think how they will tickle strokes when strokes puts it on again. The skin is just under the rocks below the palm tree in a cool place. That's why you can't see it. The Parsi is wearing a new more than oriental splendour hat of the sort that Parsis wear and he has a knife in his hand to cut his name on the palm trees. The black things on the islands at sea are bits of ships that got wrecked going down the Red Sea, but all the passengers were saved and went home. The black thing in the water close to the shore is not a wreck at all. It is Strokes, the rhinoceros, bathing without his skin. He was just as black underneath his skin as he was outside. And I wouldn't ask anything about the cooking stove if I were you. Now... The rhinoceros did come out of the water again to put his skin on. He buttoned it up with three buttons, and it tickled like cake crumbs in bed. Then he wanted to scratch, but that made it worse. And then he lay down on the sands and rolled and rolled and rolled. And every time he rolled, the cake crumbs tickled him worse and worse and worse. Then he ran to the palm tree and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed himself against it. He rubbed so much and so hard that he rubbed his skin into a great fold over his shoulders and another fold underneath where the buttons used to be. But he rubbed the buttons off and he rubbed some more folds over his legs and it spoiled his temper, but it didn't make the least difference to the cake crumbs. They were inside his skin and they tickled. So he went home very angry indeed and horribly scratchy. And from that day to this, every rhinoceros has great folds in his skin and a very bad temper. All on account of the cake crumbs inside. But the Parsi came down from his palm tree, wearing his hat from which the rays of the sun were reflected in more than oriental splendour, packed up his cooking stove and went away in the direction of Oritavo, Amygdala, the upland meadows of Anaturivo and the marshes of Sonaput. This uninhabited island is off Cape Gara de Fui by the beaches of Socotra and the pink Arabian Sea. But it's hot, too hot from Suez for the likes of you and me ever to go in a P&O and call on the Cape Parsi. Thank you.